Hello, would you like to follow us in the labs today? We'll be drawing with robots to help us build a new sensor. This is the robot, it's called the Fisnar. It can move in three directions and it carries a syringe with ink in it. The bottom box is what controls the robot, and the top box uses air to push the ink out of the syringe. It's called a pneumatic dispenser. Let's show you how it works. There is tubing where the air comes in and we can connect it to the syringe. The liquid will go in, for now it's empty. We then place the syringe onto the robot. We 3D printed this holder. Ok, now it's ready. Let's do some programming. This robot has a very simple software where you can input commands. The most basic is drawing a line. Let's do it. We start with a line speed to tell the ro robot how fast it should move. Then we define starting and ending positions. We can then upload the code onto the robot and we're ready to give it a go. Do you see the robot moving? We can not only do lines, but any shape in 3D you can imagine. We are now ready to add an ink. We can use very different kinds. It can be a conductive ink to draw electrical circuits or a biological ink to fabricate sensors that detect diseases. If you want to learn more about conductive inks, watch the following video. For now, let's just use some water and food coloring. This is normally used as a control ink. We first place the nozzle. Different sizes of nozzles give you different volumes or thickness of the pattern you draw. Then we load the ink. The ink has glycerol to make it more viscous, in other words, thicker and easier to print. We put back the lid that's connected to the air. The air will push the liquid out of the syringe through the nozzle. We've programmed the robot to draw the name of a research group onto paper. This is filter paper, similar to the coffee paper you have at home. Do you see that the red ink spreads on the paper and the initial printed line becomes thicker over time? We can control this by defining a barrier that, that blocks the flow of liquid. Today we are drawing the barrier by hand using an eyeliner. We could also use the robot to print this barrier using impermeable ink that repels water. This is called hydrophobic. If you want to learn more about hydrophobic, watch the following video. Ok, we paint it onto the surface, but that doesn't stop the liquid to flow inside the paper, so now we need to melt the eyeliner so it embeds through the whole thickness of the paper. For this, we use a hot plate in the lab, but you could use anything at home, like a hair dryer. Let's see if it works. We now print the center of the rectangle and hope the virus we drew will contain the red ink. Oh no! This is the result, and the barrier is leaking in some areas, but it did work in others. Welcome to science and real lab experiments. They never work on the first try. But we know the problem. We just didn't leave it long enough on the hot plate. Easy to solve. We leave it here for today. Hope you enjoyed.